guys, welcome to Stack the Shelves for the week of, or weekend of October 26th. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a Stack in the Shelves, I was going to call it book call, whatever. Um, it's been very busy. I was out of town for a conference and then I was back and then we left and went for a long camping trip up north. And now I'm back for a week and then we leave to go to a gaming convention next week. So yeah, I have a lot of books has got a little bit out of control not as many graphic novels and mangas from the library a lot more that were bought <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and just go through them um i do have two audiobooks that i got through the audible originals which i did not like print out a picture of or anything the first one is carmilla and my understanding is that it is like a dracula retelling of some sort and that, as I said, was a free Audible Originals. When you're an Audible member, you get two free Audible Originals every month. So that was one. Um, the second one I got was a Carnival Row short story. And I'm forgetting the name of it. But if you're familiar with Carnival Row on Netflix, this was like a story set in that world that was released as an Audible Original. So that's the second audiobook I got. Then I did get one book for review this week, and that is The Unwilling by Kelly Braffett, or Braffet, I don't know how you say that. I'd say Braffett, but maybe it's Braffet. Um, all I know about this is it's a young adult fantasy, and it comes out, I believe, in February, February 11th. So it comes out in February. I got this through the Amazon Vine program. It is quite a sizable novel, but it sounded like a really cool um, fantasy book, so I'm excited to have received it to review. So that is the one review book I got. I did get a couple more graphic novels from the library, only two this time, so not like the huge massive amount I have been getting. Um, the first one I got from the library, Space Boy Volume 3 by Stephen McCraney. I think I said Stephanie McCraney last time I got one of these, but it's Stephen McCraney. And this is a science fiction graphic novel, like middle grade, young adult. Um, I like the illustration style. It's bright and colorful. It's kind of a cool premise. And uh, so far, my son and I have both been really liking this. So this is the third book in that series. I apologize. I'm like kind of sitting here sweating because I just finished lifting weights. And it's not ever really a good idea to like go work out and then come and do a video right away because you're like, ugh. Anyways, the second book I got from the library is One Piece Volume 1. Um, yeah, by Ichiro Oda, I think that's how you say that. Um, again, this was, I reserved this quite a while ago from the library. This is in my quest to find a new graphic novel series that I really liked, or a manga series I really liked. Um, this is supposed to be a very funny manga series. I think my son will really like it. I'm not sure how I will feel about it, but it's about a boy who can't swim because he accidentally ate gum gum devil fruit but he wants to be a pirate and so he is on a quest to become a pirate even though he can't swim something like that um so then the rest of these i bought which i'm a little bit ashamed to say but i am down to like three books on my to be read pile and i'm i'm not gonna lie like getting down below five books on my to be read pile makes me feel slightly panicky. Like I'm used to having at least 10 books around to read and I read five to six books a week. So, you know, I needed to get some books and I could have gone from the library, but my son's book fair was going on. And then we went up north and there's a Barnes and Noble up where we like to vacation up north. So we always end up stopping by there. So I ended up buying a few. Um, at Barnes and Noble, I bought two books. One I just bought because it looked fun, <laughs> and that is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Um, those of you who read more adult books and don't read a lot of kids' books like I do um, probably know V.E. Schwab, and this is the same author. Um, she wrote Vicious, Vengeful, Darker Shade of Magic, those kind of books. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of Vicious, but that's the only V.E. Schwab book I've read. Um, this looked like a fun, like, young adult Halloween read, maybe middle grade read, and I like the premise, so I went ahead and read it. It is the first book in the Cassidy Blake series. So City of Ghosts is supposed to be kind of a spooky Halloween read. Looking forward to reading that. This one I also bought at Barnes & Noble, and that is Salt to the Sea by Ruth Sepetus. And I probably said that wrong, but 
Um, if you follow I mean, my blog, you I recently reviewed Fountains of Silence, which was another receptus book that has just published or is going to publish soon. And even though everybody was saying that like was one of her worst books, I absolutely loved it. So I wanted, this is one I had on my wish list for quite a while. It was on sale at Barnes and Noble. And I decided to go ahead and pick it up because I absolutely love Fountains of Silence. And Receptus writes like historical fiction, but she does it at least for Fountains of Silence in a way that's very relatable and engaging. And it's not like super heavy and hard to stay interested in. So very excited to read this. I think my son will like it too. He's very into historical fiction right now. He likes reading um, a lot of like fiction based in like World War II era and stuff like that. And that is what this is. And um, Ruta Sepetus, I think I said Ruth, it's Ruta Sepetus, uh, does a very good job of writing about kind of like lesser known historical events or times that aren't covered very well in like normal history, American history class that we get here in America. So I'm very, as I said, very excited to read this. Um, enough about that one. I picked up two books at my son's um, book fair from school. Uh, I always volunteer there, and so I get like a certificate to spend there. And then additionally, we always just get some books. The school gets a cut of the profits, and we love books. So my son always gets a couple books, and then I get a couple books. So the two books I picked up there, and I will say it's gotten a lot easier to find books I like at the book fair now that he's in middle school versus like elementary school. There wasn't a whole lot, but um, the two books I did pick up there is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I know this one has been getting mediocre reviews, but it's kind of a retelling of the Christmas story, but with a girl as main character. And I just thought it'd be super fun to have around for the holiday season. In addition to that, I love this cover. It's got like this red foil in the, I don't know if you can tell, the bindings all like red foil too. And I'm a sucker for pretty books. So, um, and like the font stuff is absolutely beautiful in here. So <laughs> I had to pick it up. And it was, it's the books at the Scholastic, Scholastic is the Runs of Book Fair and they're always super cheap. And then the second one I got for me is, you can see it was a $5 special. I should pull that off. It's A Face Like Glass by Frances Hardinge. Um, this sounds really, really interesting. It's, um, I'm not even going to try to describe, but as a young adult, like fantasy, very dark fantasy. It sounds really cool, and it's actually been getting really good reviews. I remember being interested in reading it when it came out, so when I saw the book fair, I was like, oh, I should get that. So a couple of yeah, fun young adult books. And then the rest of these I bought because we as a family are absolutely loving the full metal alchemist manga series. And, um, I can get them all from the library, but between me reading them and my son reading them and my husband wanting to read them and my son wanting to reread them, we decided it would be worth it to go ahead and just buy all the omnibus volumes of full metal alchemist. So we're gradually doing that. There's a lot of them, but I prefer to read my manga in like the three in one volumes because I like reading like a 500 to 600 page manga series and doing a review on it rather than reading like all the teeny volumes from the library. So those were the next three I have. We bought these on Amazon. Um, they're actually not bad. The omnibuses range between like seven to ten dollars depending on which volume you're getting. So we got um, Full Metal Alchemist 3 in 1 Omnibus number two. Two, which contains volume four, five, six. I got the first one too, but my husband has it right now. So we do have the omnibus one, two, three I bought. And then we've got the third one in the three in one omnibus series, which is volume seven, eight, nine. And then the fourth one in the omnibus series, which is 10, 11, 12. And I haven't been buying as many books. Um, we've been trying to get them from the library because we're just trying to not have as much stuff around the house. But there are certain manga series that like I know I'm going to go back and read this series. I really love it so far. And the same with like Vinland Saga. We own all of those in hardback omnibus because they're amazing. And I know we're going to go back and read it. They're just certain series we keep. We keep Berserk around. We keep Helsing around. Um, the Claymores we still have around. I don't know if we're going to read those again, but my son will probably read them. I'm trying to think. Black Butler... I keep around. So we do have some manga collections that we go back and reread quite a bit. Um, I know a lot of people will, so at the book fair, I hear a lot of like kids want to buy manga and parents are like, no, that's going to take you 10 minutes to read, you know? 
Um, my only comment to one of the moms was, you know, if your kid rereads stuff a lot, it might be worth it. Because I know, like, my son has reread, like, Zeta the Space Girl a million times. He's reread, um, I'm just, like, blanking. He's reread a ton of his series a lot. Like, he has the Wings of Fire graphic novel series, and he reads both the book series and the graphic novel series over and over and over. So if you have a kid that's going to read stuff a lot, it's nice for them to have copies. Like, I have copies of books that I used to reread over and over as a kid, and I still have them, and they're not in great shape, but I still read them. So sometimes it's worth buying the book. Um, and graphic novels in particular, manga in particular, I like to read in paper format. I don't feel like I get as much out of it when I'm reading it in electronic format. So yeah, that was a little bit of a divergent diatribe there. So that's what I got this week. Um, let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't have the Willian under here. And then the two, so ten, I think there's 12 of them total. And as for the last couple of weeks, but I was trying to kind of restock up on things. Um, I recently did request quite a few books for review on NetGalley. Um, I am almost out of review books. I'm pretty caught up. I think I have one or two that I need to review. Um, and those, those books don't release until February. I think the two I don't have, what was it? I think it was Silvered Serpents and Red Hood. I have to review still, but they come out in February. So I try not to review books on my blog until the month before they release. I don't know. I got those really far in advance, so I might review them a little early. Um, as for what else is going on here at our house, I don't know. I've honestly been a little overwhelmed this last month. Um, as I mentioned, I went to that conference, which was fun, but you're off. You're not at work a whole week. I got back. A whole bunch of stuff happened at work. Um, I was there a couple days and we left. We went up north. We had some, we had a great time up there. It was beautiful weather. Uh, I was in the 40s to 50s, which is wonderful for hiking. We did some of our favorite hikes, did some new hikes, um, stayed in our camper. It was great, but then we had to come back. And a lot of stuff happened at work right before I left that was not great. I mean, just, just issues we're having with the product I'm working on. So then coming back on Monday was just like, oh my gosh, this is so much to deal with. And then on top of that, hockey season has started. So my son is having practice almost every night. Um, we got our tournament schedule. We have four out of town tournaments this winter. He is in a lot of heavier classes at school. So he's got a big science project he's trying to work on. Um, he's got he had to do redo a math test, so he's getting a little bit of help on some topic in math he's having trouble with, which I was really impressed with. He actually called me and told me he's staying after to get some help on math because he didn't quite understand some stuff. So I was really happy he was like taking the initiative to like get help. Um, he's got some big engineering projects in his PLTW class, which I learned stands for Project Lead the Way. It's like a national program that students can get into. So that's what he's doing there. What else is going on? I don't know. It's been a lot. He's had history projects that he's had to do and make posters for and just a, a lot of stuff. Oh, and then he decided he wants to be a paid referee this year. So he went to class for that. And he's actually down right now doing the final exam to pass to get like his referee license. I guess at age 12, you can start being a paid referee for hockey in our association. So he's going to do that this year. So he's keeping us really busy. Sometimes it feels like I'm back in middle school. I'm trying to help him like keep track of stuff and make sure, you know, that things are getting done. I think I mentioned before, I'm not, I'm not super keen on the fact that like, I like to know what's going on. Like the teachers email us about what's going on. But then at the same time, I feel like I'm somewhat responsible to make sure he gets the stuff done. And I'm okay with doing that now. And like last year, it seemed like I was doing a lot more of it this year. He's actually, my son is taking, you know, he's taking more control over his stuff and doing a lot better at like getting stuff done on his own and everything. So that's great to see. He's really grown a lot this year, but I still feel sometimes like I'm back in middle school and I don't necessarily like that feeling. <laughs> middle school wasn't a great time for me. I really enjoyed college more than anything. So anyways, uh, 
yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, I hope you guys got some great books, that you're having a great fall, and that you have a great week of reading ahead of you. Um, I probably will not be doing a post next week because we will be at a gaming convention. Um, Game Hole Colin, the Game Hole Con in Madison, Wisconsin. We'll be doing a lot of Pathfinder and board games and some True Dungeon. And it's like one of our favorite things to do every year. We actually pull my son out of school a couple days to do it, which I always feel a little bit guilty for. But we're super excited about that. And then we've been playing a ton of Pokemon Go. So we're really hoping that we can go down there and hang out on campus at Madison and do some good raids and, um, you know, get some different Pokemon and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I know. Super geeky. But we kind of we were like really into Pokemon Go for about a year and a half. And then my son lost his count. We stopped playing and we've been playing it just a ton again lately. And so we're pretty into it. Like when we were up camping we like hit all the raids into harbors and went back down to Duluth because there's like a ton of pokey stops in Duluth and did that and then went to state parks and they all have pokey stops so anyways all right enough I will talk to you guys in a couple weeks um again hope you got a lot of great books hope you have a great week of reading and I will talk to you in a couple weeks bye